guys and gals, and welcome back to the 1927 podcast. Today, I'm going to talk about the late 70s and gaming in general. Back in the late 70s, I started my gaming I started gaming. Um, back then, most games, all the be- all, all the best games were played at what was called then arcades. And you had arcade machines that would actually where you go play the games and all that. And I I spend a lot of money. It, it was like twenty five cents a pop. And I spent a lot of money. There was it, there was. And some of the newer games that were coming out was 50 cents a game, uh, 50 cents a pop. And they were kind of interesting. But I got into PC gaming. And basically, basically that was in, that was at home. I, they, they actually, it wasn't PC gaming. Um, the PC had been developed back then. IBM had developed a uh, personal computer. But these were computer modules. You have one module that would have the CPU, and that would have the brain that did all the, collect all the data and, and and ended up figuring out what to do with it. He had another module that had floppy disks. And back when I first started, the disks were floppy disks, five inches big. About five by five. five. It was a little slot. You just put it in there and would read what was on that disk. And that would have enable connection to the center of, of that. If you wanted to be on the internet, you had to actually connect a modem to your PC, uh, to your computer. And basically what this is, is a coupler. You take the half phone and boom, connect it to the coupler. And it'll make all these noises and go ahead and get you on the internet. Now, the internet back then wasn't what it is today. It was mainly just for, it, it was just mainly information. Text. There was no videos. There were no, um, there were some images on there. and But you could download you can download data and you can find things. I actually found a PC game online, played it, liked it, but it isn't what you used to back then. It wasn't even 8 bit back then. Um, it was just type in. Looks like Dungeons and Dragons. You take them what you want to do. Go north. Go west. Go east. Go south. You take them what you do, and it'll give you a response on what happened when you took that step. And that was about it. I did do some... I learned how to... My father was a minister. Before he became a minister, he worked for a computer company called RCA Computers. And they sent him to school and they taught him how to write in a program called DOS. DOS was the mainframe of every computer back then. You didn't have Windows. DOS was, you had to use DOS to talk to your computer. So he taught me 
some DOS. I ended up buying, I guess it was one of the first books. One, one of the first books, which was DOS for Dummies. I still, I still wish I had that book. Um, but it was called DOS for Dummies, and you typed in DOS codes. It taught you how to play, how, how to use DOS. I started, I actually started making pictures. And then I started doing, I ended up working with a guy at the fire department. I was 17 at the time. I was 17 at the time. And it was 70, no, it was 81. It was 81, I was 17, and I was a junior firefighter. And the fire department first got their first computer. And the computer was to, because the state of North, uh, state of Maryland at the time, I was living in Maryland. The state of Maryland started requiring the fire departments to log in the incident. Well, one of the firefighters, um, actually worked for NASA. He was a program, he was a computer programmer. And he lived in our little community and he volunteered as a firefighter. But he worked on, he started working on the shuttle. He worked on the shuttle program back then. And he was writing computers and he was asked to set up the computer. And then when he was setting up, I started asking questions because I knew he was a computer programmer. And him and I decided to write a program together. And he requested that I, because once he set up the computer, and PC computers actually started coming out then, there was an IBM PC computer, and he set up the computer and gets the program set up and all that. Still writing in DOS, you still had to copy this. A copy this from five inch to three inch. And him and I just started writing. He taught he he got me to. There was actually a computer committee, and since he was only computer programmer in the in the. In the fire department and he saw that I had an interest in computers so he he uh, allowed me and I was the first junior firefighter to ever ever be on a committee at in that department and him and I we started writing programs we actually wrote a program, a fire stimulation program for the officer training. It was called Fire Command. Him and I worked on it together. And, you know, when he was at work some, and it was like during the summertime, and I was hanging out at the fire station, I would go work on it while he was there. And then he would stop by on his way home from work see what I've done, make corrections, and him and I got it, it took us six months to write that program, and all the officers had to have access to the program, to the computer, so they could put it in some reports, um, we even set up a, um, it, we even had a program for inventory, hoses, the nozzles, um, we had spreadsheets put into it that we could print out on the dot, dot matrix computer. Dot matrix was a sheet of paper about this big that was, had holes inside it that would feed the paper. And we would write, I was also working on that with him, setting that up, setting up the inventory, and I was working with one of the officers. 
at the time. And but we wrote this program together. And the assistant chief, Tommy, he was the first one to play it. Play the fire command. And basically they showed a little building. walk around the building because it did have 3D back then. I showed a little building and we showed like a little plane flickering out. Okay. And on the left hand side was you can type in commands into the computer and it would ask questions. What would you do? And it had rem it would, you type in what you would do and you either Pass, you got the fire out or the fire spread or you killed somebody but yeah a scenario where a firefighter would die or people would die in the building if you didn't do things correctly and we had different types of buildings we had houses single story houses we had two story houses we had um, three story townhouses and we had commercial buildings and stuff like that. Different scenarios. There, I think we had like 10 scenarios at the time. And you type in your, what you would do. It would have a list of A, B, and C. And D. Now I have four. Last question. And you have four choices. A, B, C, and D. And you pick what you had to pick. And they liked it. Tommy loved it. And he required every officer to take to play this program. It was him there. And see how they did. Because we were all volunteers. Um, be an officer in our company you had to be on the fire department for x amount of time you had to have there was class called fire command through the university of maryland fire rescue institute you had to take that class before you could come before you could run as an officer in the fire department so that was a program that uh means the other guy made and it actually went to um, a guy from New York Fire Department because he the guy who helped me write this program he put it up on the internet for a fire department because there was a little community on the internet that had fire, it was called Firebuck Community. I belonged to it. And he put, he put the program up on in Firebuck. And a lot of the departments took a look at it. And a lot of them wanted to utilize it. One was New York City Fire Department. And they contacted us and they gave us different scenarios that they wanted added to it. So we worked on it and stuff like that. They paid us. They paid us for programming the additional stuff onto the program. And that was good. But back in the 70s, again. There was a console game that came out, and it was my first console game. It was the first console game to ever come out. It was called Pong. Basically, you had uh, let's go. You had two paddles. You go, you go 
go this and this. You had a little line that was in between there. And a little white ball would go in between a blade. And you try to keep the white ball from going off the screen. And it was multiplayer. Two people can play it. Or one person can play it. They would have it set up so you just have one on here and a, and a white line here. And you just bounce the ball against the white line and basically played handball by yourself or table tennis by yourself by putting the back of the table and during that time me and my sister played that game a lot my friends would come over we would play it a lot my father and I would play it, play it a lot my father's the one who bought the program bought the console and played it a lot Good game. It got boring after a while. But that was gaming back then. You either went to the arcade and played um, in the arcade these games. You had Donkey Kong. You had other games that were in there. And most of them made by Nintendo. There was one game My mother came and started playing it with us. And this game actually came out in the 80s. It was called uh, Miss Pac Man. We had Pac Man. My mother would play that. Because sometimes she, she would come to the arcade with us, to, so we had a ride. And every once in a while, if she was looking for me, she would come down to the arcade. Because either I was at the fire department, because I joined the fire department when I was 15. Either I was hanging out at the fire department, or I was hanging out at the arcade. And I would drive my, back before I had a car, before I could drive, I started driving at 16. But before then, I... When I was 13, 14, and 15, I rode my 10-speed bike into town. We lived outside a outside the city, and we lived in we lived outside Purdue, Maryland, which was a small city. And I would ride my bike into town. It would take like five miles outside the city, in a little housing development. And I would ride my bike down to the city, either to the fire department, which was this side of the city. <coughs> Excuse me. But I would ride my tennis speed bike either to the hang out when I turned 15 and started was a junior firefighter, I started hanging out a lot more there than there than the arcade. And if there was a fire call, I could actually ride the equipment. I mean, we had our own boots, turn our coats, and helmets. But I could do that. So I hung out at the fire department a lot. And sometimes my mother would have to look for me. Started look, it, it, sometimes I lose track of time and it would be like, five o'clock and I wasn't home. So she would go look for me or my father would go look for me. And she would be come and get me. But every time I was in the arcade when she looked for me in the arcade, there was one time she went to go look for me. And I came home. And um there was a new game at the time called Pac-Man. And my mother went to the arcade and started playing. Oh, I wasn't there. So she, and she saw, the, saw this Pac-Man game and she started playing it. I came home at a little bit after five. And my father came home at 
same time he pulled in, the same time I pulled in. And we saw that Mom's car was gone. We didn't have cell phones back then. And we were wondering, where, where is she? She had the food out from the freezer, starting out some food, but she, usually at 6 o'clock we have dinner. Between 6 and 6.30 we would have dinner, and she would cook us dinner. And she wasn't home. Where is she? Six, six o'clock came along. And she still wasn't home. We had no... Well, maybe she had to work. She was a nurse. She was the head nurse of the emergency room back then. But well, maybe she had to work late. Okay, so Dad started cooking dinner. About 6.30, my mother finally shows up. And we're like, oh, did you have to work? Uh... No, I went to go find Buddy, because he wasn't home at 5 o'clock. I went to the arcade, and I saw this game called Pac-Man, and I started playing it, and next thing I know, it was 6 o'clock. It was 6.15, so I'm like, oh, I have to come home and get dinner. She got addicted to that game. <laughs> then when Miss Pac-Man came out, she loved that game. She loved it. She liked it a lot better than Pac-Man. So she played it, and she loved it. Um, when, the, when back in the eighties, when Nintendo first came out, first con, first eight bit console game came out, they had a bunch of their, a bunch of their games that the, you start. You were able to play those games that you were playing in the arcade, now you can play them at home. And she loved... She, she, I was out of the house when, that, when Nintendo came out. I was living on, living on my own back then. I came over to visit one Sunday. Because every Sunday we would have Sunday, di Sunday, Sunday dinner at home. Everybody came home. Unless I was working, but back then there was blue laws. So I was working for. No, I was working for the fire department. Unless I was working on that Sunday. Um, we, I would. Me and my sister, and if I had a girlfriend, bring my girlfriend over at the time. And my sister would bring her boyfriends over at the time, and we would have Sunday family Sunday dinner, sort of like they do on Blue Blood every Sunday. And if I wasn't working, I would go. And one day I came home, I get I came to the house, and on top of the TV I saw this, saw the Nintendo game. Like, why do you all have the no game. Well, your mother loved Pac-Man so much. She's addicted to it. So I went ahead and bought it for her. And she plays Super Mario. Uh, she plays Mario Brothers. And she plays. She got addicted to playing games. And to this day, she she doesn't have a console, but she plays games on her phone all the time. I mean, they kept that Nintendo, and they they ended up moving out of state. And um, they moved from Maryland to Massachusetts. Father took a church up in Massachusetts back in the '90s. And they kept that game. I think they had it. I think they stopped, stopped, I think it finally broke back in, sometime in the 90s, and my mother didn't like any of, any of the other games, so, and I had console game, I had Nintendo, then I had the Atari, no, I'm sorry, I had the Atari, was it, yeah, Atari came out first. And I was still living at home at the time. 
and my mother started playing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. When I moved out, she couldn't play them no more because I took the console game with me. I was 19 when I left home at my first apartment. And I was going to school and, and working. But we'll get into that in another episode. But gaming back then was different. I got my first PC when I was in the 80s. And I've had a PC ever, ever since then. I got the PC when back in the mid, my first PC that I could actually afford. I got back in the mid 80s. And I started playing a lot. Of, I've been playing PC games since the, seven, since the late 70s. And I just enjoyed it. Now, if you have any questions about the 70s, game-wise, if I can remember, I have, I, I received a lot of, I, I received a total of five concussions in my career as a firefighter, and my memory is not as good as it used to be. I used to be, I used to have an identic memory. I don't remember half the games I used to play. I don't remember all the games I used to play. I remember certain ones that meant something to me now. But I'll talk about that in the 80s and 90s. And early 2000 games. But that's what it was like back in the 70s. How you played video games. Or PC games. Not video games. It wasn't video games on the PC yet. Back in the 70s. But you had video games in the video arcade. Along with pinballs and stuff like that. I used to be a good pinball player too. But, um... Play pinball. And you had these little games made by Atari and Nintendo. These Japanese, um... Gaming companies. Atari came out back in the 80s. And Nintendo came back out in the 80s with their own awesome games. And that's when arcades actually started dying. There was an arcade in the mall where I lived. That's where I would go ride my bike to the mall and go bring all my quarters. I used to have like a pocket. Both pockets filled quarters. Made the game. And the arcade was huge back then. I mean there's the arcade that we that I went to, there's two arcades in the city. One was in the mall that I was at and there was a standalone in in downtown Frederick standalone arcade which was small but the one mall was huge I mean it had over a hundred um between pinballs and video games it had over a hundred games in there and they would advertise the paper we have a hundred game hundred plus games that you can play at our arcade and school was out It would be packed with summer. Well, sometime that game, that place would be packed from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. during during the, during the week when school was in. And when it was, school got out, a lot of kids went to the arcade after school, like me. I did, but when I started joining the fire department, I didn't go as much. When I was 15, I joined Independent Hose Company. And became a junior firefighter. And I would go to the arcade maybe once a week. Once I joined the fire department. So I wasn't really into all the games that much. Um, there was a couple games I liked. I'd check out some of the games. I didn't, I didn't play it as 
much as I did back then. I went before doing fire farm because I had a new interest and I wanted to learn to become a firefighter. I was taking classes at night because University of Maryland would bring structures to to the fire departments and they would hold classes and you got certifications for it and stuff like that but I'm gonna talk about that in another episode so if you got any comments suggestions let me know down below and do me a favor hit that like button every like I get gets this video seen a little bit more which helps grow this channel and let's the series let this podcast grow so let me know down below have a question or anything like that i'll try to answer it either in the podcast or but answer it from the comments and if you do hit that subscribe button the bell that way you know when the latest video and podcast come i do come out and as always have fun playing your games be safe out there in the world and i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>